Hello, Amy Davis here. I want to share a word with you. I know that many of you are experiencing some hard times and difficulties, and I want to encourage you that we are currently standing at the fringes of Glory Fire, the fringes of Glory Fire, and we have this great opportunity to yield fully into the fire and be transformed. I want to share with you a word the Lord had shared with me. It's been a great encouragement to me. Um, helping me through even difficulties. Here's the word. The righteous generation sings a holy song in the very language of heaven. The lyrics are a declaration of the new covenant promise. This generation will have a revelation of the true knowledge of the blood of Yeshua and his promise of union with us. Those with boldness of speech will excel in glory. They stand before him with unveiled face, willing to be transformed from glory to glory into the likeness of him. They are known by holy fire and they tremble at his word. The glory fire purifies them and so they do not hide. They don't hide from the fire for he would not hide them from darkness. Instead, they confront shame with his light and conquer fear by weapons forged in love's fire. His fire is their provision, his promises, their song. We are currently standing at the fringes of glory fire. In this season, those who choose to yield into the elements will be engulfed in his presence and trained in righteousness. The sound of rejoicing will dance across the flames as we go beyond the fringes. There we are tried as gold and purified by holy fire. This fire will touch the earth and a remnant will be ready to steward the glory. Job 23.10 says, But he knows the way I take. When he has put me to the test, I will come out as gold. Oh, that's where we are right now. Standing, some of us at the fringes, some have yielded into the fire and they're experiencing, or maybe you are experiencing that fire full on. Some of you are standing outside, like, I don't know if I want to let go, and I don't know if I want to go in there again. There's so much to be purified. You guys, we're getting prepared. We're being made ready for a great move of his spirit that's coming. We have been talking for quite some time about how um, the difficult things would happen, but also a great shift in the spirit would happen during tabernacles and that time frame and how we would have seven months of preparation leading us to Passover to Passion Week and the great breakthrough, um, an even greater shift that would come um, during um, at Passion Week, and that is going to happen. We are being prepared for that great shift, and we can be excited about that and yield into this fire. Let me quickly share with you a few things that the glory fire is. You know, we ask so often, Lord, bring your fire, bring your glory fire. Uh, we ask for that fire, and then when the fire comes, it, you know, it's, it's not this thing that we just respond to, you know, flippantly. No, we yield into it and it, it works on us. It, it's a discipline for us and we are truly, we're, we're trained by it in that space. The scripture says righteousness is, is produced and uh, we understand righteousness is produced in the fire. It's produced in discipline. Hebrews 12 says, it's for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as with sons. For the moment, all the discipline seems to not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it afterward, it produces the peaceful fruit of righteousness. That's what the fire is training. It's training us and bringing us into a place of righteousness, a place of maturity. The spirit of burning is here because it's a necessary process for our maturity. The language in Hebrews, 10, Hebrews 12, when the Lord talks about um, how um, the father disciplines us as sons, sons there is the, is the Greek word huios. You've heard Paul Keith talk about that. It is describing maturity. A mature son who lives in conformity with the father's nature. And that's what this fire is doing now. And it is preparing us because a greater shift is coming. 
It's coming, guys. We've already seen the confirmations of the word that the Lord released through us over this last couple of years. We've been, been releasing words about what would happen and what we can expect, and those things have happened. So we're looking back at them going, okay, what do we do now? What we do now is we pray, we allow the Lord to work in our hearts, to transform us, and we get prepared because this great move coming, um, there's going to be a, a whole a generation coming, a whole um, harvest coming in, and we want to be ready that we can really steward the glory in a great way. You ask for glory, says the Lord, and I give to you the glory fire. It will purge and enlarge your heart and set you ablaze. It is the all-consuming love of the Father. The glory is exposing sin in order to be a son conformed into his image and sharing in his holiness. We must resist sin to the point of shedding blood and our striving against it and crucify the flesh. This death will result in life and the peaceful fruit of righteousness. That's according to Hebrews 12, James 1, and many other places that talk about the fire. It's a harvest of righteousness. It's coming. It's near. We first will experience that. So if you are standing on the fringes, I say, go on in. It is glory fire, and it's going to work some things out. And you can be excited about that if you're already in it, and you've gone through the difficult process of yielding. The yielding is the hardest part, and you're in the fire. I encourage you to continue to walk by faith. Walk by faith. It's a, it's a great day ahead. We can be encouraged. The Greek word for fire in Strong's in the Bible Hub definition is exactly this. In scripture, fire is often used figuratively like the fire of God, which transforms all it touches into light and likeness with itself. God's spirit, like a holy fire, enlightens and purifies so that the believers can share more and more in his likeness. That's what's happening to us now coming into his likeness. Indeed, the fire of God brings the uninterrupted privilege of being transformed, which happens by experiencing faith from him. Wow, that is the definition in the Strong's. Um, it says there that fire is our privilege. Wow, our privilege as sons. The fire of God is our privilege, it's our promise, it's our purifier, and it is our provision. Job 23 says, when we are tried, we will come out as gold. So Lord, let us yield into the glory and experience the full measure appointed to us. That's my prayer for you, and that's my prayer for me. Um, it's, it's an, um, it should be an encouraging word and an encouraging time because we know that a harvest is coming. We want to be a good steward. We want to be ready. We want to be prepared. Uh, we want to come into a place of union with him. We want to make room for those who come into the kingdom, prodigals returning and new believers coming into the kingdom. We want to make room for them. And how do we make room for them? By getting rid of all of the stuff that we have cluttered around us, even cluttered around our hearts. We get rid of that and we make room for them. I love that word that we get to make room for them. Let me read you a verse that we have been teaching out of. This is Isaiah 43, verse 20. This is a prophetic word for what's coming and why we must experience the fire, experience the purging and make room. Isaiah 43, 20 says this, your children that were born in captivity will say, this place is too cramped for me. Make room for me that I may live here. That's what we see happening now. We can, you can hear the whispers saying, make room for me. They don't even know what they're going through. They don't even know that they're getting set free of captivity. And we're over here going through the purging so that we can make room for them. And we can make room um, getting rid of all of the stuff that we have cluttered around us. Many of those things, I wrote them down here, they can be uh, uh, ruins of our past, old systems, battles we fought. The ruins have been even as scar tissue taking up room. So we get to get rid of all of those things. Be made ready. We can come into a place of union with him 
And so experiencing the fire is a necessary part to coming in to a walk of maturity, the place of a mature son. So I encourage you in that. Um, and it does take faith. It takes great faith. We, we don't know what, for some of you, you don't know what tomorrow looks like. You're fully, by faith, trusting the Lord to work it out. You don't know what you're going to do in this situation or that situation. And I tell you that the walk of faith, it is, it's creating in us a strong character and it's bringing us into a, a righteous walk with him, him, unlike we've known before. We are to be the righteous generation. And those coming into the kingdom now, those who are choosing a kingdom life now, they're part of the righteous generation. And we're going to get to train them. And they're going to build. And we're going to build together. We're going to do this thing. We have to be prepared for that day and that time. And I believe that time is coming soon. I think we can watch for um, the time frame around Passover, around Passion Week, the date I was given was Nissan 13, and um, I'm watching for that day. What will happen in the realm of the spirit and what will happen on the earth around that time frame? We can expect to see another shift then. And I think we're going to see um, some hard things on the earth, but I think we're going to see some great things, some great kingdom things happening. The all-consuming fire. We're going to see glory fire. We're going to see his glory manifest. And it continues to change things. It continues to purify us. It moves us from glory to glory. And it shines a light on, on sin and on situations that need to be dealt with. And so we deal with them. And we get healthy and we get whole. And we, we get back in that fight. And we move um, in His Spirit. And that's what we're going to do and continue to do um, in these coming days. So be encouraged by this. The walk of faith is hard. I'm going to share a quick little story real quickly. 2008, I had um, a prophetic word uh, from Joshua Mills. And he said that the Lord was uh, bringing me out of the boat and onto the water. And as I stepped onto that water, the Lord would turn that water into wine. And there would be days in my life where I would feel there was nowhere left for my foot to step. But the Lord said, just take a step. And I know that now my steps are leading me deep into the glory fire. And sometimes I'm like, I don't know where I'm stepping, but I'm stepping. Um, I'm doing it even in fear and trembling many times, but I'm stepping. So I encourage you to take those steps. We're going to believe for the Lord to turn the water into wine. We are going to believe for him to purify us that we can come out and, um, and be gold, refined by the fire. It's a good thing and it's a good day. So I bless you with this in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm.